What's up, everybody, and welcome to Black Hollywood Lives, The Trend. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back after quite a long hiatus. And Dariel Kristen is joining me as usual. How you doing, Dariel? I'm good. You know, I got my background. I got the stars behind me. I kind of feel like, um, you know, I like to set my mood on with my background. And today I'm feeling out of space. You're, you're you know feeling I mean? out of space. Okay. All right. That's out of different. Space. Out of space. <laughs> In a good way, you know. Among the stars today, among the stars. Okay, okay, well, excuse me. That's nice. I got flowers, so I'm always keeping it in bloom here. But uh, speaking of things in bloom, <laughs> we've got love in bloom on the video today because we have the stars of Marrying Millions joining us. We have Desiree Hall. How you doing? I'm doing blessed and highly favored, just like you. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. All right. And we've got Rodney Foster joining us as well. Welcome, welcome. How are you? Good to yourself. I'm doing really well. We have some technical difficulties, but we are strong and we're going to get into it today because we have watched y'all show and there is so much to talk about. <laughs> so much. Look, look, these are notes. Just so <laughs> much. I was like, so oh, I want to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But we want to start off a little because we always start off with like, you know, a topic, a thing that's going on and whatever's happening in the world. And right now, obviously, it's the week of Valentine's Day coming up. It's coming up on Sunday. So and every and it's obviously it's Black History Month because we all black every day here. We don't even yes. have to, you know, what I'm saying? Right, right, about that. right about that. Exactly. But because Valentine's Day is coming up, as usual, all out in the, you know, social media sphere and in the chat and conversations, everybody's fighting like usual. What's the point of Valentine's Day? Is it a real <laughs> holiday? Does it really matter? How important is it? Is it just because you ain't got a man or you don't have a woman that you don't care? Like, where is everybody falling with Valentine's Day? So since we got two loves on the air today, we want to talk to y'all about how y'all feel about Valentine's Day and has it changed over time? Desiree, will you want to start us off? Well, to me, Valentine's Day is a day of love. It doesn't matter whether you have that special one or you don't, you should love yourself first. If you love yourself, then, I mean, it's going to be a great day regardless. And, and I would advise people that don't have a significant other boyfriend or whatever to just love yourself. Do something special for yourself. You don't need that other person to validate you. Validate yourself. Draw yourself a hot bath. Treat yourself maybe to dinner or not at this COVID eat in, order, <laughs> order out something special, maybe your favorite dish, and just. For sure. Now, that is a very evolved idea about how you feel about Valentine's Day and yourself operating in it. Have you always been able to operate in that space as a woman? Well, me personally, honestly, I've always been like an, a loner. So I've always like, been, I always think of like creative things to do, um, things that I do. I come from a large family and my sisters, nobody can shop with me because I love to walk. I used to walk from like 34th street all the way to 125th street looking for that perfect outfit to match it up. So they're like, <laughs> no, we're not going shopping with you. No, never again. <laughs> so I learned at a very early age how to, <laughs> how to love myself, just be with myself, enjoy myself. So before I you know, got into a relationship. I used to go to dinner by myself. People were like, oh, you eating by yourself? I was, I was having a great time. I went on trips by myself, had a great time. I mean, I just, I just love me. You know what I'm saying? So once you love yourself, it's not a problem of doing things with yourself. And the great thing about that, you can make your, you know, your own decisions. You don't have to worry about someone else, you know, saying, oh, well, I want to do this and you want to do that. Cause I like, I'm very active. So I like to yeah. exercise. I like to take hikes. When, when I travel, now that Ronnie and I are together, things are different. So it's just mm -hmm. like, you know, <laughs> once you get in that, to that relationship, you have to think about the other person. You have to consider them, which is a beautiful thing. But sometimes I have to realize I'm not by myself anymore. So sometimes I have to check myself and say, you know, there's someone else in this relationship. So you have to think about them, their feelings. Maybe he doesn't want to do what you like to do. So it's, it's about compromise when you're in a relationship. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it really so great because what matters to me matters to Rodney and vice versa. We always check on one another. So that's why I love him. I love you, babe. <laughs> I feel Aww, the love. I feel the that's love. That's so sweet. <laughs> right. Right. 
All right, Rodney. So how have you, how have your thoughts and feelings about Valentine's Day kind of changed or stayed the same or felt over time? Well, I always felt that, you know, Valentine's Day, it shouldn't just be like, you know, that special day. You should celebrate each other, your loved ones, or whoever, all, you know, not every day, but as much as you can. Not just that special one day, but, you know, I think we kind of like overplay Valentine's Day, you know, and which is a great thing, but, you know, I think, you know, when you have loved ones in your life, you should always celebrate them, not just for, not just on that one day. Absolutely. Well, as Courtney was saying, you know, every you see what I have to say? <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, all day, every day. All day, every day. <laughs> And, and as Courtney was saying, ah, it's 365 days a year. <laughs> I like that energy. 100%. And as Courtney was saying, everybody's been talking about Valentine's Day, but everybody's been talking about your show as well. So, mm -hmm. and yeah. especially you too. So <laughs> let's, 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 let's get right into it. You know, let's get right into it. So we, you know, we talked about, like you said, we talked about Valentine's Day and those things. I, I'm interested to know, what is it about you two that you saw in the other that you were like, you know what, this is this is the person I want to be with. Like, I'm sure that you both have had a variety of different dates and, and relationships. But what was it that made this one so special for you um, in, in, in like finding true love? Well, let me start first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, sure, you know darling. <laughs> I'm a more laid back person, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm more chill. And, you know, other people I have dated, you know, they're more chill as well. You know, in D.C., we're very conservative. And when I met um, Desiree, it was like, <laughs> five, you know, we just kind of like clicked and just had fun. So, you know, it was just something different than what I was used to, you know, going out with. <laughs> I, come with that, I come with that flavor, that spice. <laughs> Always a party, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> what about you? Have, well, I've had a lot of time alone to like really reflect, like once I get into that real relationship and this time I went in with prayer. So, mm -hmm. so I went in with a different concept. I went in with God asking him for the type of man that I wanted. So when I met Rodney, it was just like, he was laid back. He was cool. And I mean, he's just really trying to be really conservative right now, but he's very romantic. He, he's, he's he's playing down on Valentine's Day because he is that type of guy that he can surprise you any day of the week. I mean, that's the same man that filled my whole apartment up with roses. And I'm just like, oh, because he knows my favorite roses are pink roses. They just kept coming in. I'm like, okay, all right. You know, it was like, no, we have to deliver them. We have to leave them here. So that's that man right there. <laughs> so with that being said. Great people all the time, not just Valentine's Day. Yes, and I love it, babe. Keep it coming, babe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and as I was saying, he's 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 the type of man that I want in my prayers because I I, I was a victim. Well, I'm a survivor of domestic domestic violence. I was a former New York City police officer, so I've seen a lot of things in my life. I've seen death. I'm, so that's why I really treasure him and I value him because, like I said before, what's important to me is important to him. And he, he makes that known. My life matters. So if, if we if we encounter certain things, it's just like we always discuss them. And I find that very hard. Like in a lot of relationships, people don't talk. So that's why another point in the show, when he revealed something that he cheated on me, I can understand why he's why he did that because we always talk about everything so that's why I was so upset because he's my best friend so if he was struggling or having issues with that I felt that I should have been the first one that he you know that he's told that he's having issues with that you know and you know but he didn't so that's why I was so upset about that yeah mm. well, we, want, we want to come back to that in a second but <laughs> <laughs> before we leave into I that yeah I know she's going oh. there <laughs> She brought it up, so we gonna go there. But just before we leap into that, because you, I mean, you prayed about it, like you guys found each other. What made you comfortable or even think it was a good idea to put your relationship on a reality show? Oh, I gotta go with this one. Okay, because he was keeping me a secret for two years, right? And I was, I'm, I always, anytime I'm in a relationship, my man is like happy, like he wants to tell the world about me. 
So I found that that was kind of strange. I was like, why doesn't he want to tell anybody about me? And then in a way it was, it was more intriguing, like more interesting for me because I've never been treated that way before. So I was like, well, like, I guess because I, I'm always used to like used to men, like, you know, really like going hard and going after me. He was more like relaxed and like reserved, like saying, well, you know, I'm not going to chase you. You, you already said, you don't want to have sex before, um, before marriage, you know? So it's just like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be that man, but I'm not going to, I'm like, wait a minute, like something's just not right. He's not interested, like, okay, enough is enough. And he gave me a million excuses. It wasn't good for business. Most of his, um, his clientele was women, you know, so he didn't want, his relationship, his business relationship to be spoiled once they found out about me. So I was like, well, maybe. So then when I saw that, cause I'm an actor also. So when I saw the, the casting for Marrying Millions and I saw that they were um, looking for, you know, just regular people, real life that I was like, do I really want to put my real life online like that? Like out there for the public to see. Then I was like, but I really do want to marry this man. And we've been discussing marriage. He said that he wants to marry me. So I have to call him out. So I looked at the um, the ad or whatever. And before, you know, I contacted anybody. I asked him, I said, Rodney, I called him. I'm like, Rodney, I was like, you know, there was like something I saw online. And he was like, and then I was like, um, I don't know if you really want it. He was like, really want to do what? Just say it. Like, does you want to say something? Just say it. <laughs> right? So then I was like, well, this, this show and it's called Marrying Millions and one person's rich and one person's not. And I said, do you want to go on the show like that? I said, and then he said, yeah, of course. Why not? I said, I was going to marry you anyway. Why not? It'd be great. So then I was like, what? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so that's how we got our married in millions. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, with that, it's like Courtney saying, you're putting your life in front of the public and there's, there's pros and cons of that, you know, and you both seem very open, especially when watching the show, you're very open to just saying who you are, what you are, what's going on in your relationship and not afraid of that. I would be afraid of it. I'm, I'm, I, get, I get afraid if, if, you know, somebody, I'm afraid of if keeping, you know, too much, getting too much information out there. So I applaud anybody who's able to go in there and just be themselves and just be real. I also don't like comments because people always have things to say. How do you deal with that? Because there has been so many things talked about your relationship, who, you know, why'd you take him back? Sexuality, all those things. How do you, how do you go and move forward and ignore those things? Or how do you take those things in? Okay, go ahead. Let me just, from the beginning, the reason why I said yes so quick was I didn't think we was gonna get picked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reserved. I'm, you know, I'm not like, you know, just out there acting real crazy, you know? So I didn't think we was gonna get picked or anything. That's why I was like, yeah, you know, cause I'm like, we ain't gonna get picked. And <laughs> Lord, Lord. and I couldn't back out then, you know, because they had already said, you know, we want to bring y'all on. And I didn't, you know, I'm a business person. And, you know, when I say I'm gonna, you know, do something, I do it. And I didn't want to make myself look like a fool to the producers and executive producers like, but nah, I don't want to do it because I already said I was going to do it, but, you know, just comments or anything, you know, I mean, I don't pay attention to comments or whatever people want to say, because at the end of the day, the, all those people that's making comments are not going to pay any of my bills. That's a fact. If they want to pay any of my bills, then I will adhere to their comments or whatever the case may be. But, you know, I don't care if you're doing something good, people are going to talk about you. If you're doing something bad, people are going to talk about you. People just gonna talk about you, period. And you know, I've always just built myself up to not let nobody tear me down because if that was the case, I'd be a goddamn wreck. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. you know, I I looked at some of the comments that I comment and joke with them sometimes, you know. So it it doesn't bother me. I think it's kind of hilarious, and I just have fun with them, you know. I feel like Desiree, you got, you got. So she wait, some, she got something to say. What to say? Yes. So wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you never told me you were having doubts about coming on the show. I mean, we have talked about. See, that. I learn something new about this man like every day. You know what I'm saying? Really, you never told me that you never thought we were going to get picked or that you 
we're having second thoughts about coming on the show. This is this is all new. Like, yeah, no, I'm not. I was really having second thoughts about coming on the show. I was just basically like, we not going to get picked. So I said, yeah, you know, and you know, it just turned <laughs> out that, but we got picked. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing we got picked because I got to meet your parents. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, I, mean, I love your mom and dad. I do, even though we have our, you know, yes. Eventually, all that would have happened anyway. It just, you know, the show kind of like forced it to happen sooner than later, which, you know, things happen for a reason. And, you know, looking at the show, going back at it, you know, I wish I would, you know, I could have did things differently. But, you know, we all make mistakes in life and, you know, you learn from your mistakes. So, you know, it's all good. What have you taken the most in terms of how either how you communicate or how your relationship is going like in participating in the show what has it shown you about yourself and your relationship that maybe you want to shift or change or that you think is amazing that you guys maybe didn't realize or give as much attention to before. Well, one thing that I have, you know, took from this is that like I tell Des, you got to stop telling everybody everything. You know, you got you best friend everybody <laughs> and no it's not really just that because you do have your friends or whoever your boys your girls that you confide in you know but Desiree when she knows something she go tells everybody <laughs> <laughs> everybody is not happy for you and you gotta sometimes keep yeah, some true. some people out your business that's you know that was the most thing that you know that I feel you know those things that we 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 working on that you everybody's not happy for you yeah. and everybody's not going to be for you and not saying that her friends or family are not but you know that's just how i view things have have most of your friends and family been supportive of you both being on the show yeah when my mom you know she when i first told her about it, she was kind of like shocked because you know like with me and my mother we have a great relationship but we don't, as far as like that personal stuff, you know, I kind of find hard, you know, uh, talking to my mother about personal stuff, like growing up, you know, I'm the only child growing up, like my mother never talked to me about sex or anything, you know, mm -hmm. those things that, you know, you go out and find out on your own. So, you know, we never had that personal relationship. We always have a great relationship, but talking about personal stuff. It, would, it never happened. That's why I think I'm so, you know, guarded about my relationships and things like that because I don't share that with everybody. Yeah. That's and right. I come from a family, I have four sisters and one brother. So what we're all- What yeah. do you fall in line? Are you- So I'm you? the middle child. So I'm that child Yay. who's- Yes. <laughs> so I'm that Little child who's- like always making everybody laugh, dizzy dizzy, putting the straws up my nose and, you know, just cracking jokes. So I've always been like like that, that crazy like child, like always getting into something. I'm the one, I'm telling mom, you did that? Uh -uh, I'm not getting in trouble. I'm telling mom. So that was me. <laughs> so it's like, we're quite the opposite because I believe I'm, I was the tattletale. I'm gonna just put it out there. In my family, I'm the tattletale. Everybody knows that. So if you're doing something, don't tell this. Okay, so <laughs> she's telling mom. So, and that's how we, my family, we talk about sex. We talk about everything. Even my pastor, my bishop, we, I mean, when I, my church, I mean, we, he talks about it. Like, you know, sex is a bad nature for an occasion. So for me, I'm coming from a different world. I'm coming from a more, I guess, like um, a millennial mega church where P Bishop Kenneth Ulmer, you know, Faithful Central, he, he, he keeps it real, you know what I'm saying? You gonna burn, you know? So it, it's just like, I'm used to just keeping it real. And then he's more reserved, you know, more secretive. That's not me. I, I, will, I believe if something's happening, we're going we're gonna to tell, tell the world, we're going to work it out, we're going to talk it out, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. That's how I am. Okay. I feel that. And speaking, sorry, but speaking of that, how do you... I'm trying to, you know, understand this philosophy that I want to hear from y'all here. Okay, so I had to sit up in my seat. Oh, you you I had to sit up in my seat. How do you, um, you know, not test the waters before you get married? Because how do you know what you, you know, you can be in love, 
but then how do you know that you're compatible in all the areas unless you test all the areas? Trust me, we it. I tried, but no, <laughs> it wasn't like it wasn't like that. You know, from the beginning, that's what I agreed to because I did not agree to that. But just out of respect, okay, this is what you believe. Okay, so. I'm going to go with what you believe. But in the beginning, it was like, where the fuck she come from? <laughs> I like but, you. You know, <laughs> it, it, you know, just over time, you know, just out of, it, to me, it was just out of respect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But not, and, uh, saying, not saying the other things didn't happen, but just, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Desiree, can you speak to why that was important for you to do, to hold on to at this point, especially at this time in life? Okay, well, it's very important to me because now I know who I am. I'm a child of God and I know my worth. So I know that I don't have to get up, put myself out there, biblical standpoints. And honestly, in my life, I've always been like, I've honestly, for the most part, I've really always been this way. Even if I had a boyfriend, I'll take him. We'll go get tested first. You know, we, we're going to go through. We, I just don't go to bed with anybody. I've just never been like that. So it's going to take a while for him to get to know me. Then we go to the clinic. Then we get tested. And then we, you know, then we used to, you know, take that, um, that venture. But like I said, now that I know who I am, I don't have to do that. I know my heavenly father, he loves me. So the man that chooses me, he's going to respect me like my heavenly father does. He's going to say, okay, this woman is worth it. He's seeing my worth because mind you, we're going to get older. You know, sex is not always going to be there. What, what are we going to do after the sex part? Leaves? We need to be friends. We need to be, we need to have that emotional and that psych- psychological and that spiritual connection first. That's what's going to be everlasting. Yeah. God forbid, if anything happens to either one of us, we could get into an accident. What I could become a paraplegic. What is he going to do? Leave me? because we can't have sex. Right. No. And that's what people don't understand with spiritual beings having a human experience. So we have to get back to our roots. That's what real love is. Love is, it, it has no boundaries. It has no, it keeps no tabs. There's no this and that. There's no, oh, well, your, your breast stinks this morning or whatever. Love tells you, Des, your breast stink, go brush your teeth. That's what love does. <laughs> <laughs> it's just keeping it real, you know? So that's what I, what I want him to understand. I'm in this for the long haul. I'm not here to just, you know, um, for you to try it out, you know, and in 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 a relationship, what you can do is there's so many things, there's sex toys, there's there's so many ways that you can satisfy one another. And to me, the the best part of sex, honestly, is a foreplay. It's not when you're having sex, it's the the pre, the prelude, the interlude to sex. That's the best part. <laughs> and like I said, he 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 can he can pretty much figure it out. Your man can figure out how you are. You know what I'm saying? They can they can figure it out. You know, it's not like we don't fool around. I'm not gonna say that we do. You know what I'm saying? We do play, but we just don't take it to the to that level. So he gets to feel like my into my touch. You know what I'm saying? I touch him, I caress his hair. There's there's ways you know that I please him. You know what I'm saying? He knows I'm a good woman. I know I know, <laughs> I know Courtney over there. Like what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> No, I, I am. I support and think it is so beautiful and amazing when you can have that kind of discipline because it is not easy. And it is you. I, I am a believer as you are in terms of, you know, we are spiritual beings and lovely children of God and being able to hold on to that is not an easy thing to do, especially as a fully grown woman and a fully grown person, period. So, I mean, it's a blessing that you guys found each other and can honor that between the two of you, even when I'm sure it gets challenging when things get a little heated, heated up, because that's just life. <laughs> I'm fair. Yeah. Praise the Lord, that's, hallelujah. That's, that's yes. beautiful. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm not even gonna comment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it does has a challenge and it does has frustrations. I'm not going to sit here and lie about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, those that sometimes, you know, causes arguments in the relationship, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. No. 
Well, can you guys, I know, we, we, we touched on, obviously there was, there was some infidelity and you, but the thing that was striking about that part of the conversation for me with um, you, Desri, is that you said, one of the things that was hard was that, you know, we were best friends. Like this, I should have been the first person that you told, like when you were having issues and felt like you needed to step out. Like, so the, like the, the like that betrayal of friendship is almost, you know, it's worse than the actual act of the infidelity sometimes. How did you get to a place where you could build back You'd be, you were even willing to build back that trust and friendship to get it to where, you know, a place where you feel like this is still somebody you could marry. Well, for me, honestly, it wasn't easy, but then I kept thinking about it, like looking into it and I had to go back to the Bible. You know, I had to do a lot of soul searching in the Bible about forgiveness and I know about forgiveness. For God to forgive me, I had to forgive Ryan. And, and that was to free myself too. It, was, it, it wasn't so much like forgiving him, but I had to heal. And the only way that I could heal is if I could truly forgive him. So I prayed on it. I mean, I asked God and then God was like, if you, if you can't forgive him, then like, how could I forgive you? And I read that in, in the word and so many stories in there. I mean, even with Hosea, when God told him to marry a prostitute, you know, and take her in and she had children by him. And then after she had the children, she went back into prostitution and then God told him to take her back. And I'm like, wow, I know all of this, you know? So it's just like, if Jesus Christ went to the, to the cross and he died for me, then who am I? I mean, Rodney cheated. I mean, that's to me, that's, is my, that's something that could be fixed. If God has forgiven me and he's taken on all the whole world sins for, 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 you know, just for me, so I could have eternal life, who am I to say, oh, I can't forgive this man? And knowing that I love him, it's like, we've been through a lot. It's like, we, we shared a lot, we vacationed together. I mean, we have so many memories. So am I gonna throw that all away and say, I can't, you know, I can't forgive him? I feel that the relationship is worth trying to save, you know, and I'm not gonna say try because try is a failure. I feel that our relationship is worth saving. I really do. I mean, like I said, I applaud you both just for being able to go through obstacles and things in front of the world and, and express yourself and, and still have a strong relationship. For somebody who is looking for a relationship or someone who is in a relationship, what are some key advice that you might give to them to maintain a relationship like you have right now? Well, I think the most part is about communication. You have to communicate with one another. <clears throat> communication is the key in everything that you do relationships, business, or whatever the case, friendship, you have to communicate with one another. I mean, you have to be able to trust one another and be honest mm -hmm. with one another. When Desiree asked me the part that I cheated on her before, you know, I could have lied and said no, but would you rather for me to tell you the truth now, I mean, now, and then deal with it or lie, and then you found out from somebody else. Not saying you would find out, but just that you did find out. I mean, I think dealing with that part is just worse because you you know i lied to her about it you know so you know that was the point of you know being honest about it like she said hey did you cheat on me i'm like yeah you know it, it happened so i just better just go in and deal with it right then and there then deal with it down the line you could have did it off camera <laughs> <But anyway. laughs> the thing about it you didn't ask it off the camera <laughs> <laughs> she said, okay. I've done it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> you could have said, wait, wait, wait till later, okay? <laughs> Ask me this later. All right. Let's now talk to right the this is how much. I mean, you know, we, we are on, you know, we're a quote unquote reality show. And, you know, most part of it, you know, you got to be, you know, tell your truth what's going on. You mm -hmm. know, you can't you put yourself out there, you can't say, well, I don't want to share this out there. If you're going to put yourself out there, put yourself out there. Okay. That's real. Well, okay, right. so just remember, just remember I'm like, that. I'm, 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 I'm taking it all in right now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> remember that when you see some of the upcoming stuff that I said about you. I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, okay. Hold up to that. Remember he said these words, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. <laughs>
Well, moving forward, uh, what do you guys feel like, like if you were gonna describe your vision for your black love that's gonna last for however long it's meant to last, what does it look like for you guys? I think you have to be in it for the long haul. Anybody that's planning on having a real relationship and everlasting relationship, not something fired by night, something that's not materialistic, not something because you have money or you have a fly car. If you're not, if you, you, you're looking for a serious relationship, then what you should do is look for, you have to, you have to accept the good and the bad, and you have to be willing to work through it. Whether it's counseling, whether, you know, whether it's with your bishop or whether it's um, psychological counseling that you need, you need to go into a marriage, looking to go into a marriage for the long haul. And that means to death do us part for better or for worse. And I think for me, it's about compromise. You know, you when you're in a relationship, you have to compromise, you know, and you will see it plays play out on, you know, as we get into the, you know, other episodes that, you know, if you want to be in it for the long haul, we can't keep doing this right here. Like you in one city and I'm in another mm -hmm. city, it's not going to work. So, you know, without giving what's going to play out on the show, <laughs> you know, the, what we, what you ask plays out on the show. Okay. And, and again, to me, it's compromise. You know, it can't always be, you know, your way or my way. You know, we have to meet in the middle somewhere. Mm -hmm. Agree. Agree. You have to, you have to meet in the middle. And the thing about compromise, compromise to me is not, is not the one who has the money, who makes the decisions. <laughs> And, or it's their way or the highway because they make the money. So to me, that's not compromise. So, you know, there's like, we have issues. We have issues that we're working about. That's all I want to say. <laughs> we're not perfect by any means. We're not professing to be perfect, but at least we're showing people what it entails to make a relationship work when you really, when the love is really there. Well, yeah. we started off the show talking about Valentine's, how are you guys going to celebrate Valentine's since you are in two different places? <laughs> well, <clears throat> for the, I, I have to go, I've been going back and forth out LA, you know, quite a bit. And I know I'm not gonna be able to go out there doing Valentine's Day, which is Sunday because I have, you know, things I gotta do here. So I will make that day still special for it, <laughs> even though I'm not there. You know, so that's not a problem. You know, I can be in Egypt somewhere and still make that day special. <laughs> yes. That's true. Egypt. Egypt. That's true. And, and he just left. So, you know, he just left LA. So it's like, I really, I only had a pre Valentine's day and I'm going to get my, still get my real Valentine's day. So <laughs> as you all just heard. I heard it. <laughs> Well, I'm excited right. to see where the rest of the season goes. I mean, like I said, you guys have been talked about and, and you are intriguing and I, I feel the love between you two. And I, I really respect the honesty that you, you're bringing to the show. Um, right. We talked to so many people who, even though they're on the show, they don't want to give you a lot of insight on who they really are. And I feel like you two are doing the opposite of that. You're letting us know exactly yeah. who you are. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, what is it going to hurt me if I open up my doors to people, you know? Again, only thing you can do is just say what you want to say, which is not going to affect me because I'm still going about my day. And yeah. for me, it works for me because I'm getting to find out more about him than I ever had. So I got to really seize the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and take advantage of this opportunity right now. So yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. and Anthony, are, you a, are you a Leo or a Sagittarius by chance? And Aries. Oh, okay. Nice. I'm, a, I'm a Leo. Okay. Uh, I was like, okay. Oh, okay. All right. That's interesting. That's I wouldn't have picked a Leo. Oh, All yes. right. All right. Well, obviously, like new worlds and what we can find out in reality TV. And like just to echo what Dario said, I appreciate and am so have some mad respect for you bringing your relationship to television, even through the struggles. Like he said, the love is apparent and it's clear. And we love to see the love because we don't get to see that enough, especially these days. Yes. So, all right. So, I love you, boo. 
All right, remind our audience where they can see you guys on Mary and Millions and what night and where they can find you, whether it's on social media, if you have any websites or anything you want people to look at. Well, we are um, the Lifetime Network on Mary and Millions every Wednesday at 10 p.m., um, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can find me on social media at Rodney Foster. Yes. And also I have a, a nonprofit charity that's the number two, Help the Vets. And so that's dot com. So that's me. I love giving back to my com community and serving. That's what I do. And then also I'm going to be on this other show called The Fixers. I'm going to be helping a community center in L.A., in the L.A. area. It's called The Concerned Men, Concerned Black Men. And that's going to be airing tonight at 6 p.m. on The Fixers. That's the BYTU channel. Am I, am I saying that right? <laughs> yes, yeah, so BYUT, BYUT TV channel. So I'm going to be doing that tonight. It's for a great cause here in L.A. And then, of course, Mary Millions at marymillions.com at lifetime.com. Am I saying it right? <laughs> I hope so. I hope they don't be mad at me. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then my handles, all my handles are at D-E-S-I-R-Y-H-A-L-L. -L. So that's Desiree Hall, at D-E-S-I-R-Y-H-A-L-L. -L. Yes. <laughs> awesome. All right, Daryl, where are they going to find you at during the week? Uh, wow. Let's see. You can find me at, <laughs> you can find me at a lot of places, actually. Uh, well, not too many places during COVID. That's a lie. I know. Uh, you that's can real. find me at Daryl Kristen on Instagram, Twitter. And Facebook, and you can also find us on We Are the Trend on our Instagram page, on our Facebook page, on our uh, whatever. We got all kind of social media pages, but yeah. please subscribe to our show. We just revamped it, and we got a lot of good guests coming up, like we had today. And so, uh, support our page and subscribe to it, and leave us a comment. For sure, yes. and you guys can always find me at Stuart Starlet all over the Instagram, Twitter universe. Like you said, it's <laughs> at We Are Underscore The Trend and at BHL Online. Make sure you check us out. Make sure you guys watch Lifetime and check these beautiful people out <laughs> every week. Give them the love and the support in the comments and everything, because we probably we want them back for another season too. So you know, <laughs> let, the, you. let the powers that be that know, because you know that's how you keep the the fan favorites on. Let them yes. know you love them. Thank All right. you, thank you, and thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and sharing as usual. So you guys stay safe and have a beautiful holiday weekend. Yes, happy <laughs> Valentine's Day, guys. Happy, happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Take okay. care, guys. You too. Thanks again.